Alicia Sabot, and this is Can Explains Romanticize Your Life. Today, we're taking a closer look at the romanticize your life trend. What is it? Why do people do it? And what can we learn from it? Get your art hats on. Before we dive in, let's define the word romanticism. Romanticism refers to the movement of art and literature in the late 1700s into the middle of the 1800s that began in Europe. Romanticism emphasizes the importance of emotions, individual feelings, and imagination. Romantic art showed the natural world as beautiful, powerful, and unpredictable. Okay, but what is the trend now? Romanticize Your Life takes things from romanticism, like slowing down, slowing down, feeling your emotions, and embracing romantic styles. It's been a concept for a while, but sometime in 2020, this sound started making the rounds on TikTok. You have to start romanticizing your life. You have to start thinking of yourself as the main character. Because if you don't, life will continue to pass you by. Since then, it has continued to take off with some influencers' content being completely geared to showing off their romanticized lives and telling other people how to recreate them. Romanticize Your Life has a lot in common with other trends, like that girl and main character energy. The main idea behind romanticizing your life is taking your regular routine and making it romantic. Kind of like being the main character in a movie. Content includes mood lighting, frilly dresses, pretty makeup, ambient music, soft colors, beautiful food. How can you create this life? Well, according to bloggers and creators who champion it by slowing down, embracing nature, being grateful for the little things in life, learning to bake and cook, reading classic novels, watching romantic movies and TV shows and so much more. To better understand this trend and different ways to look at it, we turn to media experts, including... I am Amy Morrison, an Associate Professor of English at the University of Waterloo. My name is Jessalyn Keller. I'm an Associate Professor at the University of Calgary, and I study feminism in media culture. I fart around on the internet for a living, and then I explain it to people think that this trend became popular during the pandemic because lots of people were struggling with being stuck indoors and not having control over their day-to-day routines. I think this is the kind of movement where people want to share it with others because it's a lifestyle that they think will bring positive change to others. It all seems pretty nice, right? But critics have pointed out some flaws and possible negatives of this trend. One critic is Olivia Sun. Her commentary on YouTube is actually one of my inspirations behind making this video. Is romanticizing your life turning you into a happier person or a happier character? One of the criticisms of romanticize your life is that it is Eurocentric. Eurocentrism means things that are focused or centered around European and Western cultures. You're focusing on that culture only, and then you kind of forget about all of the other cultures that exist and that people take part in. If we dig even deeper, there's lots that we can learn about society and social media from this trend. People can romanticize their lives without recording and uploading it to their socials, but a lot of people who engage in it seem to like sharing their experiences. Yes, but that's not really what this trend is is about, right? It's about doing that through posting these types of videos or, or images, right? When we share our lives on social media, that can sometimes be called performative. Performative is basically a fancy academic way of describing how people perform their lives and identities for others. When we upload a video to TikTok or a photo to Instagram, we know that other people will see it. So how we portray ourselves and our lives can be seen as a performance for our audience. And I know that most of the time people say they do it for themselves, but I always have a little bit of suspicion on how true that is because if it was truly just for yourself, then why do you feel the need to like 
make a edit a whole video and then post it online and then consistently make videos about it to show people. Of course, real life is not like the movies. We can't all be Rory Gilmore or Emily Paris after all. In movies and TV, there are whole crews of people making things look just right. But for a regular person, that kind of effort is kind of hard to do on the daily. For some, romanticizing in the very specific way that is popular online is completely out of reach. I would kind of hold a critical lens to it and say, um, who can be the main character in their own lives? Right? Is this something that's actually on offer to everyone? Okay, but you might be thinking, hey, Lexio, what's wrong with wanting to be the main character? Having a positive outlook and doing things to boost self-esteem can be a good thing. But relationship and mental health experts say that thinking of yourself as the center of all the action can also cause some problems. For example, if we think of ourselves as the main character, that can cause conflict with some people. And family and friends might start to feel like a sidekick or just a prop. I think sometimes being the main character is a sort of kind of overvaluation of your own importance in the world. In reaction to main character and romanticize your life trends, some people have started to create counter trends, like hashtag not the main character. Amy Morrison says this sort of reaction is common with trends. As things become more popular and mainstream, more people want to start to push against it. And that's why trends come and then they go. They play out, right? Oh, that's so played out. Nobody's doing it anymore. What's even the point of analyzing social trends? Isn't it just for fun? The point of critically thinking about trends is not to shame or call out the people who make or like the content. But as consumers of social media, thinking about the reasons behind trends can build awareness and boost our media literacy. Sometimes the reason for a post can be pretty obvious, like when an influencer poses with a product and puts the hashtag ad. Other times posts, even from our close friends, might be trying to sell an idea of real life that's only part of the picture. Just don't take things at their face value. Um, the best question that you can ask when you're looking at trends we take for granted is just the simple question of why. So if you want to romanticize your life, go for it. But remember, there's always more than what meets the eye. That's it for Can Explains. For CBC Kids News, I'm Alexia Sabo. A lot of behind the scenes work and research went into making this video. First off, I'd like to thank Amy Morrison, Jessalyn Keller, and Olivia Sun for their interviews and expertise. I also reference information from Psychology Today, Refinery29, The Take, Encyclopedia Britannica, Philo Notes, the Tate Museum, and Glamour Magazine. Plus, videos on TikTok, YouTube, and various other blogs gave me an inside look at this trend.